Yeah. She did a hashtag ask because that's what we do in the intensive. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, this class has changed my life, assuming she means the intuitive intensive. And with that has brought me through some peaks and valleys. It's changed me and really in relationships with closest ones, trying to stay so positive with the change in me, but at the same time, it hurts so damn bad. Probably, I guess she means the seeming like she's losing relationships, mm -hmm. heartaching, any advice on these deep valleys and trying to stay high vibe, meditating a lot, but life is so hard right now. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think we cause our own suffering sometimes by having an expectation that life needs oh, to be yeah. something other than what it is. You see this with Jesus when he went into the Garden of Gethsemane the night before he was crucified. And he had a very human moment, didn't he? He, he cried out and he said, Father, take this cup from me. I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to go through this. So I love that snapshot of Jesus because it shows us that he was afraid. It shows us that he was human. It shows us that he needed support because he asked his disciples, can you just stay awake with me tonight? Hold space. <laughs> well, hold space for me tonight. I need it. And of course, those ding-dongs fell right to sleep and he was alone. And we have this, we have this beautiful story of how he, how he prayed in that moment because I love this prayer and, and this is so important. He says, take this cup from me, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. This is what I want as a human being. Like, I don't want to be crucified tomorrow, but thy will be done. I trust whatever it is that you have for me, hard or easy, good or bad. And in this, there's an acknowledgement of the way life sometimes works. Sometimes life is just difficult. And sometimes life, <clears throat> we are called, we are called to be love and to do our very best in very painful situations that we would love to walk away from or to shed like snakeskin, but we can't. Mm -hmm. So I just want to acknowledge first and foremost that it's okay that it's not easy yeah. and it's okay to be sad and we lose friends and that's painful, Tricia. Mm -hmm. You've lost friends and you've, I've, you've wept over it. I've lost friends and I've wept over it. It's freaking mm -hmm. painful. I, I get it. I think we all do. And these things happen for a reason because they remind us of our humanity, the reason that we're here, but also they teach us something as well. <clears throat> they teach us how to not treat others. They, treat us, they teach us what kind of relationships we want to manifest and create in our lives. We wouldn't know what we want if we didn't have the contrast of what wasn't working for us, correct? So there's so many lessons in this. Life was never supposed to be perfect and happy and joyful the entire time. In fact, the reason so many of us signed up for this incarnation to come to this planet was because precisely we knew that it wasn't going to be easy. We knew that we were going to go through trials and tribulations that would test our mettle. And that's why we came. That's what we wanted. So it's about forbearance. It's about holding that light within yourself, even when there's that storm that kind of rages all around you. And allowing the season of this time in your life just to be what it is. Mm. Winter is hard and it's cold and it's deep, but spring always follows, doesn't it? But we can't rush into spring. We have to go through all of the days of winter in order to get to spring. And so rather than wishing our life was spring when it's winter, let's just be in the winter of our lives. And let's mm. celebrate it in the way that we can because spring will come soon enough. Not to be too platitudinal, but... Well, as you talk about the seasons, it reminds me of something that I discovered a long time ago that has been a lesson for me. It, I, truly, when I was a little, little girl, because uh, I grew up in Texas, and the state flower of Texas is the blue bonnet. And the, and Texas is, the weather in Texas across the whole state is, you know, they've got proper seasons, and down around Houston, sometimes it doesn't get it doesn't get quite as cold as it does up around where Crystal is in around Tarrant and Tarrant County and where, where I grew up. But we do get, we did get cold winters where it would actually snow. And so the blue bonnet is this beautiful flower with a long stem and a lot of violet blue buds all around it. And the blue bonnet seed has a very hard shell. 
so hard that the only way you will get a blossom of blue bonnets is that there has to be a freeze so that the shell will crack because the energy inside it is so delicate. This, the, 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 the energy that is created that creates that gentle little, little, a seat, little, little stem that's going to come through, the stem can't break through the shell. And so there has to be a freeze. The whole ecosystem has to cooperate. Right. And the deeper the freeze, the harder open the shell will break. And then you will have a beautiful blossom of the aroma and the gift and the pollen of the blue bonnet when spring comes. And that's something that I, I recognized a long time ago when I was a little girl. And to your point, Crystal, about the, about life, that that's okay. And this is not to be discompassionate. It simply is just if you were watching a film or reading a book and it was like, there was this happy girl and then she was happy the next year and the next year at the end, you would be like, well, this, there was no <laughs> what story a boring here. book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and <clears throat> so it is, that is the, the path of, that is the path of going away from and coming back home. And I was, I was um, not too long ago, a couple of months ago, actually, experiencing some pretty steep pain in my body, in my physical body. And it was, you know, really at a pitch and really, really difficult pain. And I heard my guides, a, a guide, you know, say, so what? <laughs> who said that your bane, who, who said your body shouldn't have pain? And again, this was not, this didn't come to me as discompassionate or judgment at all. It was just like, it came to me as who said that your body should be pain-free. And it actually made me relax a little bit. It made me feel a little bit better because I at least wasn't in the resistance to the pain. And that took a whole layer of the discomfort. It took that suffering away to a degree because what is the, I don't even know who is credited with it, that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. I heard so it from it Tony Robbins, but he, I'm sure he's quoting somebody it's, else. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, may be, it may be unknown. It may be just so ancient mm -hmm. or it could be... Um, it could be a guru or something. And so um, Jeremy's probably popping it in there right now. Jeremy's saying, <laughs> um, anyway, so it, it really helped a lot just to get to that. And, I, and I'll tell you what, the pain can subside because of that. Even the actual experience of pain, of course, can begin to subside. And so the, the other thing that comes to mind is that mental and emotional challenge, okay, I heard this from Marianne Williamson, I have to credit because I think it's brilliant, that it is like gravity. So a yogi or a person who runs or lifts weights, you actually push against the earth, you push against gravity in order to become stronger. And so our mental and emotional challenges are the gravity against which we push so that we can become stronger and we need it. And so if we can find a way to cherish it so much so that eventually we will become so strong that even when the challenges come, like the yogi, we can hold the posture and press against the gravity and then relax into it because we'll have become that much stronger and that much more capable. Yes. And I would say um, also, if I may, uh, mm -hmm. hold fast to the hope here yeah, because yeah, the process right. of of the removal of that which limits us and that which acts as an obstacle and people are some of the biggest obstacles to our progress and to our awakening uh, that we encounter. By removing those obstacles, those people that must be removed for whatever reason, we open up space. And of course, that's space for higher vibration, that's space for spirit, but it's also space for new friendships. Mm -hmm. It's also space for new uh, connections and for new opportunities and for new things to show up. And so even though it is hard, and, and again, Trisha and I, we can attest to that, it is hard, just hold fast to the hope that something new really is coming. There's a change that's taking place and it's profound. This is a profound shift that you are undergoing right now. And it has to happen in order for you to call in or in really in order for you to up level to the next level that you're being called into. You have to do this hard stuff in order to get to this good stuff that's waiting for you. And so congratulations for making these hard choices. Congratulations for protecting your path because too many people don't do it. They take the path of least resistance and they allow people who have toxicity 
people who are abusive, people who are negative, to weigh them down and to keep them from progressing. But you have made an intentional choice to get in there and weed your garden. And you have made an intentional choice to protect your path and to say yes to what spirit is presenting to you. So don't forget, even in the midst of acknowledging the season that you're in, don't forget to hold fast to the hope or to hold fast to the spring that inevitably and always comes and it will come for you too. You'll have friends that are at your level and friends that are going to be a complement to what it is you're moving into in your life. 